Let's take a look at our first piece, and really it's uh, one of two that can either be used together as a suite or individually. Why don't you, uh, in fact, we'll put the other side up, and then we'll, our great photographers, uh, cameramen, are going to get some close-ups. Why don't we focus on the one closest to me first? And first of all, what, uh, what would you say the size of the, each of these pieces are? These are approximately 25 inches tall by 12 inches wide. Okay, it's a each. nice... Uh, one by two, I guess, you know, being close to it. Anyway, yeah, so it's a nice, just barely offset. Which is good because if you don't have something that's really a big wide space, oftentimes in our older homes like mine, you have fireplaces and then you have openings and you have a narrow space of wall that always would look good with something as opposed to just leaving it blank. So this would be a great filler for that type of a hall wall, any kind of a narrow uh, space that you would have. Uh, and you've got really some vibrant colors. I like it's a lot of uh, geometrics to me on this particular one. Do you have a title for this one? Uh, these are both from a series that I called Held. What, uh, the title comes from the process, really, because these are paintings that, while I was doing them, they were sort of, uh, you know, I would hold them in, in my hand and, and, and paint them. And the process is more about, uh, like, a, a frame. Uh, what, it, what, it, what happens is I, I kind of sketch these ones out with a, with a graphite. And, uh, and I give it sort of a, a skeleton. And, uh, and then to keep it kind of minimal and give it uh, kind of accentuate just the, the structure and the, and the flow of the, the curves that's going on, what I do is I use just one color and I offset it with some white and I, I, uh, I blend it a lot like a watercolor or like a charcoal drawing might be done. Yeah. Our monitor is not showing that it's really picking up the background as a color. It's a shame. It looks like it's on a white surface, but it's not. It's on a lovely, lovely uh, beige or yellow ochre. And, of course, it's accentuated by the other colors. Um, and you said you titled these Help. H -E Held. Held as in, uh, oh, held. As in like they're... Oh, they're you were holding them. You said holding you them. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, and and they, they go further. This one I called Held in a Glass. Okay. And it's, it's almost it's, like a little it's, martini. It's like glass a little martini it. glass, and uh, and this uh, one's held in the curve, and uh, and and they're sort of some of the ones that I think are are uh, more like refined and perfect, and they're kind of the thing that uh, doesn't just happen by chance. That's something that I sort of practiced and and I sort of created, and some of my other art, you know, happens to me. These are ones that I, I kind of make. Okay. Well, why don't you put that other one up there, and we'll take a look at the second one. I'll take this one down, and we'll start. But that's, but that's a really great color combination, especially for uh, people with Let me put this one up. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Well, now we really got some vibrance. This one, to me, is a... Um, I'm uh, for those who uh, local uh, collectors know about uh, an art, deceased artist that I, I collect, Robert Gordy, uh, who... Um, very much a lot of these techniques and really really well collected today and I see so much of that info even though he might not even know who Robert Gordy is uh, if you see some of Robert Gordy's work there's a lot of the dual influence what do you call this one I really I really impartial this one it's, this one I call I called it flesh of birds now it's called flesh of birds because it's kind of a, a play on the expression you know the things like taste like chicken and it's something that's kind of universal and it feels like uh, I added like some kind of green overtones into a, like a, a flesh colored kind of scenario where you have uh, really, w what it creates is something kind of organic, and I think it's it's sort of universal, and it kind of speaks to a lot of different people, and uh, and I think. Uh, yeah, why don't I we go it, over it, some of the multicolors in here? Because uh, I, I, again, I, I see some of the the blues. Why don't you give us a little description of some of the main colors? Because it really got a nice uh, variety of coloring in it. Um. Well, uh, to describe the. I, I don't know how to describe the colors. You can't describe the colors. Uh, but, uh, but we definitely see the birds. And I, what really makes it a little more dramatic, and again, we can't show some of the gallery, is his gallery wrapping is uh, basically to do it in a solid color. And here, on the first ones, we didn't show you really he used the background color, which which uh, perfect because it just expanded the work. But here, he really makes it into a frame. You really can't see it from here, but it's a solid black Siding, and you can barely see it down there. We got it under, so it really makes it much more dramatic, and really looks like a frame piece. So, it, uh, I, like I said, I really like this one a lot. I think the the use of the black around the perimeter 
really highlights all the multitude of, of colors and I, I think so far it's certainly one of my favorites. Now let's go ahead and take another and the title on this was Flesh of Birds. Flesh of Birds. Kind of a, not, it, not, not very appealing but Oh, it's a very appealing well, title. <laughs> But certainly a beautiful piece. Now, here we go for the green. Mr. Green, this is really vibrant. Let's talk about this one, please. What you got on here? Again, the size on these are all about the same. Yeah. That, that yeah. All, all of the 12 art 12 by is, 25, you said, huh? Yeah. It's, a, it's kind of a building block, and it's a standard so that uh, that I I call it, you know, I, I made it into my standard just because uh, I found it easier to create something that might look consistent in a, in a show okay. with the other now, pieces. What are know? we titling this vibrant green month situation? This one, uh, originally it was titled something else, but I changed it. I, I, I think of it mostly as like a, an evil eye, something like uh, that wards off evil spirits. It's a protector. It's something that uh, kind of uh, a watchful eye. Uh, We're not getting into the dark side with a lot of these. What was its earlier title? It's, it was, it, was uh, it was called Maze. Maze. I like Maze. Like corn. Like like corn. Evil Eye. I don't know. If, again, I guess it depends on uh, the young people. I guess would appeal to it more. But I think uh, Maze is a real good, uh, a real good description of it. Once again, the vibrant tones. If if you like the shade of green, it's really brought out. I mean, it looks like a uh, almost like an abstract of a cornfield because it's got that same textures of greens and golden of the corn out on the hawk out in the. Field. So really, really pretty. Again, uh, his, his technique and also the choice of colors are, are extremely vibrant, and I'm, I'm liking those a lot. But let's go now to another one that's really a little bit more of uh, the pastel, a little more subtle and subdued, and then almost back to the first one, which is a little more easier. Um, what do we call this one? It's got some overtones of purple, really nice. This is another piece in a, in a series. It's kind of a study uh, that I'm working on that's kind of a, a formation of circles and different ways kind of to create circles where uh, different ways that kind of circles can form out of curves and, uh, and out of spirals and turn into stuff. Uh, this, is, this is the one that I think is the most finished and maybe the most uh, attractive of them. Some of the other ones have some more theory behind them. But this one is uh, is, is Good representation of something else, another color, the the style that I was doing with those other. And what was the title on this one? This one is, uh, it's a it's a piece from a series called the Formation of Circles. Formation of Circles. Yeah. And again, folks, uh, it's a primarily a whitish background on this one, but some lovely lavender and purple shades. I'm kind of tuned to a lot of the purple colors, so uh, really nice, but done in a very, very simple style and uh, nice flowing lines, and again, wrapped with the base uh, background color. So it, uh, again, I'm, um, I'm not saying necessarily feminine, but certainly with lavender tones, it would be great against uh, either some dark wall or in a, in, a, in a white thing, really, really pretty. Okay, well, let's see. Now we're going to move to a little, a larger size of, of his art, more of the square, I call them square pieces, and these really start to get vibrant. And we're also changing the wrapping. So, well, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, well, this is almost a square, or is it exactly a square? It's not exactly a square. It's 25 inches by about, by, it's about 25 inches by 24 inches wide. Okay. Now, what are we entitling this one? This one is entitled Relish. Relish, relish, like uh, like something that's uh, that you enjoy very much. Like a rel rel relish, relish, <laughs> that you enjoy. I, I like titles that can mean a lot of different things. Uh, I can see that. I can yeah. see that. I, I, I see it as a fabulous flower as well, looking straight down, a magnificent camellia. I see a lot of things, but again, the vibrancy of the colors and mixing the burgundy pinks used with the uh, the purple centers and a little heart, I guess, in the center there. Um, anything about it now? Let's talk a little bit about the framing, and this is what we talk about the custom framing. He actually takes custom molding that you all use in your house or really for any other purpose and wraps them around. And the way, the particular style of molding he does really gives it a depth. Uh, it's not that it's super fanciful like, uh, like the top of molding they do in the top of houses, but it's curved in the rear and then it curves in again. So it really adds a wonderful depth to the side of the painting. Not so much in the front, just gives it a little bit of white trim so it doesn't pull away from, uh, detract from the painting itself. Uh, but really, 